Hey everyone, Fuse Micro Night Chat, and today I'm doing a tutorial that a couple people have requested, and that's using IBM Watson within Unity. Now, at the time of this recording, this has been a couple weeks since Unity put out a blog post kind of going over their kind of partnership with IBM to integrate Unity in, and, and Watson together. So we're gonna be diving into that in this specific tutorial. I've kind of built out this project and I'm just kind of going and walking through kind of the things that have been set up. There's a ton to cover in IBM Watson. In this specific video, we're just gonna be doing face detection, but there's so much more that you can actually do with it. So comment below if there's anything specific that you wanna see covered with Watson. So with that said, let's kind of dive into kind of more of the setup. So. For starters, go ahead, get the GitHub repo for the Watson Developer Cloud, the Unity as SDK. And there's a link to that in the description that you can go ahead, go here. And if you scroll down, you'll kind of see some of this, the processes to, to get started. So first you need to go ahead, create an IBM Cloud account. So if you go to that link, that takes you here. I've actually gone ahead and signed in with mine and it'll look something like this. There's like getting started, a bunch of the different things that you can you can actually use. There's a lot more here than just Watson. And this is all just a cloud service that IBM provides. And once you do that, you can go ahead. I'm assuming you probably have Unity. I feel like as long as you're using 2017 or above, it should work. And uh, you can set it up to, to be built with anything except uh, WebGL. And once you do that, go ahead, you can get the SDK. Again, that's linked here. They're on currently version two. So go ahead, get that. And then let's dive into the kind of dashboard service. So for this specific purpose, what we're gonna be doing is some visual detection with Watson. So to do that, we're gonna go onto the sidebar here, go into Watson and we'll click browse services. Once that loads, we'll give it a second. There are a bunch of different services here. For face detection specifically, we'll be using the visual recognition here. I should mention now, while this is all kind of coming up, is the, the development is pretty much free. Uh, if we actually go ahead, click here on pricing. So this is, this is the pricing. You get pretty much, you get a pretty big number of things that you can do for free. For, uh, from that point on, uh, I mean, if you're pretty much using this in a commercial setting, there's like a relatively, I'd say, small fee. Um, and you can dive into anything, but if you're just trying to play around with it, see what you can do, see what you can't do, that's all free to try out. So we're gonna go ahead, use just visual recognition. Again, if you want, you can go ahead and pretty much use it for anything you want. Go ahead, hit add services. And we'll go ahead, once you've added whatever services you need, you basically create a project. We'll just call this Fused VR Tutorial and create project. You can, again, you can name that whatever you want. That takes a couple of seconds here while I guess it does something on their server. <laughs> and with that setup, you basically see whatever resources you added, in this case, just visual recognition, and you get something here on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and click show, which reveals the API key. So this is exactly what you need to, to kind of get started with uh, the actual development inside Unity. You need this API key. You also need uh, this URL, but if I, remember that correctly i don't think it'll change all that often so you can uh you can keep that url fairly consistent so once you have that api key we can go ahead and dive into unity i should mention right now that uh don't use the api key that i'm using here it's going to be deleted you have to make your own uh that's just good development practice so with that said let's just go ahead and dive into right. it here in unity you can see that i'm using 2017.3 and this is basically the project that we're gonna be starting out with. You can get this off of GitHub and I'm just gonna go walk through kind of the steps to get this up and running. I've commented out a few things to just kind of walk you through that process. So for starters here, this is the face scene. This is the only scene that's in here. And you have the Watson SDK, which I've gone ahead and imported. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and follow the, the way to do that off of the readme on the GitHub page. But this is basically using version two. If they've updated in that the future, you might wanna use a, a different version and just delete that and then add that in. So that's, that's Watson. And we have two scripts here, which are the camera rendering and face detector. Let's go ahead and reload these. So camera rendering, it basically on your phone, on your PC, it takes your webcam and it basically renders that out into your display. 
on the face detection is the, the actual things that do do face detection. And if you look at both of these strips just at a glance, obviously they're not working right now, but there's not that much code here and a lot of it is actually copied. So specifically, actually, we go back here and we go to uh, the GitHub page for visual detection. So if you go scroll down a little bit to Watson services and just click on visual recognition here and then scroll down to detect faces. Most of this code I just copied and put into the face detector. So if this ever changes in the future, this is just your reference on how to get that code and add that in. But uh, again, I'll walk through all of this in just a second. So back in Unity here, let's just walk through the hierarchy. I have a main camera here just to render anything. So if you want to add anything to the scene, you can do that. Uh, the face detection script, I've kept that as a separate game object. and I've added in a UI text object, which is actually down here on the canvas, so that we can output our data of whatever kind that we want to. I have an event system to detect touches and whatnot. I have the canvas, and this is the image that we're going to render out our, our webcam onto. So that's where that goes, and like just so you can see, it's just white for now, and it has this unlit material here because we don't want to use any lighting. It's just it's standard like that. We have our text. I've just kind of set this up. You can customize this however you want. Uh, it's just a standard Unity text object. And last thing is we're going to be using our webcam here that has our reference to the image where we're going to be putting our data onto. And we also have our face detection script. Uh, th this doesn't necessarily have to be there. I've just kind of did that a little hacky so I have access to the face detection from the webcam. You don't have to do that. You can you can massage this with a separate script, but uh, for simplicity, I decided to keep it into two scripts. So that, that's all that there is in the hierarchy. We, with that said, we can dive into the scripts uh, and kind of get that up and running. So for starters, let's go into our camera render. So on camera render, I've commented on a couple things. So for starters here is, well, start is pretty much commented out. Let's go ahead, comment that in. Basically, what that's doing here is we create a reference to our webcam or our back camera, whatever you want to call that, basically the main reference here. And if you want, you can actually go ahead on, a, on this reference and just kind of see what it has. You can get the device name, kind of dimensions. If you want to kind of massage the kind of width and height, you can do that here. So, uh, it's called, there we go, requested FPS, requested height, requested width. And, um, there, there's a way also if you want to use maybe the front-facing camera, you can you can do that as well uh, to, to get a reference to that and use that. But for this purpose, we're just going to use our webcam on our PC here. And when it moves to the device, it'll just use the back camera. Once you do that, you go ahead, hit play, which just turns on your camera and then starts rendering that out. With that said, this is just a texture. What, what we've created is just a texture. So it's the same as anything you put on a model or anything you put on a sprite. Anything, it's just a PNG texture. That's what the reference to our camera is. And what we can do is take our overlay image, that white image that we saw in Unity, get its material, which is that unlit material, and get its texture and go ahead and assign that to be the webcam. With that, you've basically done everything you need to actually get the webcam up and running. And the beauty of that is really every time like the camera moves or someone in the camera moves, that all automatically gets refreshed. So we go ahead, save that, and let's see if it works with me recording in uh, <laughs> OBS right now. Might not. We'll, we'll have to see, uh, wait and see. Oh, it works. And you can see the green screen and uh, all that beauty. So. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it to get the webcam up and running and, and moving up and down. This is luckily using a secondary webcam that I have on my PC. So that's, uh, that's getting a webcam pretty straightforward. Next thing, we'll just jump to update. And what we're doing here is whenever you click on the screen or on, on a mobile device, whenever you touch it, we're going to go ahead and capture whatever we see on screen. This is a bit hacky, I know, but uh, it's one of the easier ways to actually get a file, which we'll need later on for IBM Watson. So we're going to call capture image, which takes us up to the method here. And uh, as of, I think, 2017.3 patch one, you have to use the screen capture, which was uh, the obsoleted the application.capture screen. 
So we're just going to give that a name and that saves it to our persistent data source. So on Android, that's somewhere within your file system and on, I believe what Unity, it's actually within your, your editor. So goes ahead, gets that, and then we're going to pass that path, which is the application.persistent path slash screenshot to detect faces. And that starts our, our detect faces script. Like I said, this could all be handled in a separate script if you wanted, like specifically these two. Uh, but for simplicity, I decided to just add it here because otherwise all you have for the webcam is just kind of this little bit of text, which uh, I didn't feel like creating another script for. But if you're doing this properly, you probably would want to create another script. So that's, uh, that's pretty much everything we need for camera render. As you see, we got that working within uh, Unity and we've now sent that data off to the face detector. So let's go ahead, move into our face detector script. So for, for starters, for pretty much any IBM Watson, and this is pretty much the nutshell of the IBM Watson, which hopefully most of you are interested in, is basically you need to do this for anything is get your credentials here and spawn in whatever services you want. So credential wise, let's go ahead and hop back into here. Uh, we have our API key, I'm gonna go ahead just copy that number and wherever it says key here on the GitHub page, go ahead, just paste that in. And with that said, you now have your credentials in place for the API key. You might want to double check that your URL is the same. So in this case here, uh, we're just using visual recognition. So all of that lines up. So if, if you are using a different service, you might want to plug that into the, get, the credentials. Otherwise, don't need to worry about that. And once you've created this credentials object, go ahead, add that to your visual recognition. And this is actually something so that you don't get an error in the future. Uh, I don't, honestly don't know why this is a thing or why you have to do it. Uh, hopefully this gets fixed in the future, but you need to add a version date here and specifically this string. And the reason is if we actually go to the definition of this, uh, it throws an argument if it's null and it doesn't get assigned anywhere and it says just use this date so that's what you have to do don't ask me why <laughs> um obviously if you want you can edit that code and massage it but i'm sure something down the road is probably going to get angry at you so i recommend just add the version date here you should be fine so that's how you get the version and the, the credentials all set up ready to go i've gone ahead and assigned that here as a private variable for this script so we have a reference to it across all our different uh, methods and you also see here, here's the text that I mentioned uh, when going through it. Uh, this is also just a, an image URL I was testing with, which we'll, we'll talk about right now. So uh, the rest of this code, honestly, for the most part, is actually copied straight out of uh, the GitHub page. So if we go back to that, uh, you can see here a lot of that is the, the undetect faces. The only addition here, which is also from GitHub, is the onFail method, which I had to copy in. But... Um, uh, that's also somewhere else hidden on the GitHub, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's talk about detecting faces. So this is exactly what we called when we were detecting our, our face for specifically the um, uh, anything you want to have screen captured. So we see here, I added in a path. So that was, that was something that was added in. So I just added the path of wherever we took a screenshot. Uh, we pass that into our detect faces method, and that's specifically out of IBM Watson. And we have two methods here. Again, this is copied. <laughs> a lot of this, as I mentioned, is copied. On detect faces, it gets called whenever it does detect a face. On fail, it gets called when something goes wrong, like an API key fail or something is not registered correctly. Anything can, can cause that. You'll usually get a stupid error like this doesn't work and you have to kind of probably guess that something like an API key is wrong. So that's uh, detect faces. You have a uh, deal bug log here. If it didn't work, um, it, it returns a boolean just right away if something wrong happened. And I've gone ahead, added in this log to say we're calling Watson and resetting our text. So assuming that everything works out, we go into on detect faces, which we get multiple images and this kind of custom data dictionary. Uh, we're just going to be using the multiple images. And this specific line is important to, to note. Um, basically what we're saying here is we're assuming that there's gonna be one and only one image, um, not less, not more. 
Uh, obviously, you can you can add for loops. I, I just wanted to keep this as simple and dirt simple as possible. So that's why I'm just keeping it to one and assuming that there's one. Uh, it, it doesn't crash or anything if there's zero, but uh, just something to note there. We're just getting that first image, the first face, and we are just getting from that uh, all the correlated data with that. So specifically, let me tell you what the, the all the data is. You can get your age. You can get the face location within that image. You can get the estimated gender. And if it's a celebrity or someone super famous, not me, <laughs> you can get the identity as well. So for example, um, it was able to get Leonardo DiCaprio um, and pretty much anyone that's remotely famous, it should be able to, to give you their identity. So um, kind of scary, but kind of cool that they're able to do that just from random <laughs> pictures. So. Uh, with that, I'm just going to print out the age and the gender as well as the probabilities to the screen just so that um, you actually see that it's working. So just saying what the minimum, the maximum age is, and the probability. Uh, this is all just text. Um, and if you want to take a look at the custom data, uh, this is basically just a JSON blob of the basically all of all of the data that's actually in there. If you want to take a look at that, you totally can. Um, just get that printed out into to Unity. I'll actually go ahead and uh, uh, show that just so you have that. And that's pretty much it. The one thing you know here is if you want to test this out, you can actually get this working on a URL. So, so for whatever you want, like if you want to just go to Google Images, you can go ahead and get that as well. And that's it. That's all of this code and kind of a super condensed nutshell. As I said, there's not much here. A lot of it is copied. I mean, even this was kind of copied in the sense that it's off of Unity documentation. This is kind of putting things together to get it to work. So let's go ahead, give this a try now. So go ahead, save everything, hit play, and give that a second. All right, so it sees me. You can go ahead, click on it. So we can go to the console. You can see it called Watson, and it guesses my probability of my age and the gender with a 97% and only a 50%. It's actually right on the age, but I'm not going <laughs> to uh, say that. So I don't know why it got a 50%, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, if you want to see everything, including like a face location, you can see that it's all here printed out from the JSON. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed this video. Ton to, ton of fun to play around with Watson. Again, comment below if there's anything specific you want to see as far as any of the services that Watson provides, because there's a ton. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack that like button because it helps us a ton. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. Uh, we have a ton of fun doing that and just being part of the community. So until next time, it's been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out. <laughs>